Welcome to our lecture online. Now we're going to try to understand the concept of gravitational potential energy and gravitational potential. And there's a lot of analogy between this and electrical potential and electrical potential energy. Now let's take a large mass, for example. Here's a large mass, and because of that, around that large mass, there will be a gravitational field. What does that mean? Well, if we place a very small test mass, a very small mass here, within that field, that mass will experience a force. And that force will be directed towards the large mass. So we need to make the large mass sufficiently large and the small mass sufficiently small that the small mass really has no influence on the large mass. Now we can calculate what this force is equal to. This can be calculated using the equation of gravity, F equals g, the gravitational constant, times the product of the two masses, divided by the distance between them squared, and we do need to take the distance between the two center of masses, so this would be the distance r, and we square that. Now, that mass will also experience an acceleration. Using Newton's second law, we know that F equals ma, and if the acceleration is equal to the acceleration due to gravity, then we write it as F equals mg. And if we solve that for g, we can then write that g is equal to the ratio of the force experienced by a mass divided by the mass of that mass. And notice that both g and f are vectorial quantities. So this is the way in which we can indicate that this is the gravitational field. And we use the vector form of g, which is the acceleration experienced by an object placed within it. We use that as the symbol for the gravitational field. Now, if we take the absolute value of that, if we take the magnitude of the gravitational field, we have what we call the gravitational field intensity. It tells us how fast an object placed there will accelerate, so that's what we use to indicate the gravitational field intensity. Next, we'll, we'll look at the concept of the gravitational potential energy. What does that mean? It means the energy that is required to remove an object placed anywhere in there and move it out to infinity. Or, better yet, if we place an object at infinity and then we move it to a particular location, distance r away from it, the potential energy will drop by that amount. The amount is equal to minus g m big M over r. We can get this equation by taking the integral of this with respect to moving it. So in other words, if we calculate how much work it takes to move an object from infinity to a particular place working against the force of gravity, we'll end up with this equation right here. So we call that the gravitational potential energy, PE for potential energy, or also we typically use the, the letter capital U for that. And finally, what we came here to find out is what we call the gravitational potential. And there's a lot of analogy between that and electrical potential, because with electrical potential, we take the electrical potential energy and divide it by Q, because we want to get rid of the influence of Q. Here, what we do with the gravitational potential, we take the gravitational potential energy and divide it by the mass, which makes it independent of the mass. So we take this equation right here, divided by m, and we end up with minus g m over r, which means that the gravitational potential only depends upon the gravitational constant, the mass of the object causing the gravitational field, and the distance we are away from the center mass of that object. And that then indicates the gravitational potential. So we use this symbol right here, and this is equal to minus g m over r. Now, if we take this and we multiply the gravitational potential by m, we now end up with the gravitational potential energy the amount of energy it takes to place an object there from infinity. The reason why it's negative is because obviously the force is attractive instead of repulsive. If the force had been repulsive, this would be a positive. As a result, let's summarize all this. First of all, you place a large mass in space, anywhere in space, and you create a large gravitational field around it. If this is very large mass, we can then place a small mass in it and not affect the gravitational field, except this small mass will feel a force. That force can be calculated using the universal equation of gravity. That force will cause an acceleration. The acceleration we call small g can be calculated by the force experience divided by the mass, and this written in vectorial format is a gravitational field. If we take the magnitude, the magnitude of that, it's called the gravitational field intensity. 
If we now want to know the gravitational potential energy, the amount of work it took to put an object there, this is the equation to calculate that. And finally, if we want to have an expression that's independent of the mass we placed there, we call it the gravitational potential by taking the potential energy and dividing it by the mass of that small test object. And then we get an expression that's independent of the small mass, simply dependent on the mass that caused the gravitational field and how far away we are. And that's what we mean by gravitational potential.